This Mr. Craft Sea Harrier has all the makings of being the very worst kit I've ever made. Find out why I think so very little of it right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If you've been here before today, indeed, I am looking at the 172nd scale kit of the British Aerospace Sea Harrier FRS1 from Mr. Craft. Someone had to. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try and be fair to Mr. Craft first of all, because they just bought in the plastic from another company. The first model of this series was made by Aeroplast in the late 1990s, and that was a Harrier GR1. This was subsequently reboxed as a C Harrier FRS1, after which Mr. Craft acquired the moulds and released it with new decals in 2021. Now, if you enjoy seeing my suffering, then please do remember, give the video the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below, because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, why not subscribe to the channel Hit the bell, doesn't cost you anything, and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. And of course, if you'd like to support the channel in a more concrete way, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs. Now, enough of all of that. Let's make a start looking inside the box of the C Harrier FRS1 in 172nd scale from Mr. Craft. Alrighty, let's have a look at this kit then. Here it is. Harrier FRS-1, 50 years of 800 Naval Air Squadron. Scale 172, made by Mr. Craft Hobby Kits. They seem very proud of it. Super decals included. Excellent. One tiny problem. Despite it says 800 NAS, 50 years here. This is blue colour. The Flying Fist, the Winged Fist logo, belongs to 899 Naval Air Squadron, not 800 Naval Air Squadron. The mallet says 800 there. This is a scheme for 899 Naval Air Squadron. Is there a difference? You ask any veteran of 899 or indeed 800 Naval Air Squadron, and they will explain it to you. Anyway, so here we are with a um, pair of FRS-1 Harriers. Actually, it should be a Sea Harrier, not a Harrier, of course. Uh, Type 42 Destroyer in the background, very Falklands feel to it. And a Sea King flying here as well. It's a nice enough artwork, apart from the technicality of not guessing the name. Correct, so on the side, on the long side here again, basic decal, it says... So there's super decals here, so there's basic decals here for three fleet air arm versions and one Indian Navy version. Of course, the Indians use the Sea Harrier on the Vikrant. Side drawing of it, again, same nonsense, 800 net. You know, I yeah. feel like I'm a broken record. Anyway, model length, 199.5 millimeters. You'll be, you'll be interested later as to how why they bother with the 0.5 the accuracy of that because this is not an accurate kit at all wingspan 128.5 yeah whatever part 63 parts made in poland i would not be proud of that i have to tell you on this side just a reprise of the box artwork it's designed for people 14 years and above there's bits of thing here you know the uh, safety mark and i think it says that could be recycled indeed it is polystyrene it should be able to be recycled uh contains parts from one model paint and glue not included with english instructions and then the same thing repeated in many 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 languages um at this short end uh repeat of the same mistakes i guess d101 Four series. I've no idea what any of that is. Item 041014, in case you want to avoid it. Um, 
required modeling skill three all right uh, again scale one to 72 and at this end um, again partial reprise of the artwork and a quick view of three of the schemes let's have a look and see what's inside the box here we have the instruction sheets such as it is we have two frames of grey plastic we have the canopy and we have our super decal sheet let's look at all these bits in more detail this is frame A, two fuselage halves, underwing stores, and the air brake. And this is frame B, wings, tailplanes, undercarriage, exhaust nozzles, gun packs. I presume part of that might be a cockpit, uh, the air intake lips, and the ejection seat. And there's a bag with the single transparent part, which is the canopy. Um, have a look at the design. It's so basic. Um, simple scribed lines here and there now and again. Not even straight along. Because this, this is supposed to be a straight line. And this is truly terrible. This is, yeah, it's all raised. So all the, all the details raised. So they presumably have the, the mold and then just go along and sort of scratch lines in the mold to make them roughly fit. Um, this has been a very, very heavily used mold because it is full of flash, full of spillage, full of rubbish. It's, truly awful molding um I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I am actually lost for words at how bad this is um it's rough it's cheap and nasty basically and the more perceptive of you would have noticed that that's not a sea harrier nose because there's no radar in it nor is there a pito but i think that's going to be the least of our problems with this kit I mean, very poor moulding, frankly. The wings, again, oh, oh goodness, you can even see how uneven the wings are from here. You can feel these lumps with your fingers. It, it, it's truly awful. Quite know what's been going on. This this dog, double dog tooth, I've no idea what that's about. Um, anyway. These intakes are, so there's no intake doors even marked on them, let alone moulded into them. This ejection seat is, I think it's come out of a, maybe a Spitfire, maybe a Hurricane. It certainly is not an ejection seat. Gun pods, yeah, well, whatever. Wheels, as you can see, full of mold marks flash oh, dear. i mean they actually charge money for this and look at the size of these mounting points here i mean they're just enormous that's absolutely enormous um oh yeah Eject pin marks on the wheels i suppose the wheels could sort of sit together so you might not actually notice them there but here look this undershoot of the filling here oh dearie me well oh look at this look at this ejector pin post here i mean see how big that is and then how far into the wings these go and it's not just that one side like look here again look at that how much they charge for molding these but it's probably if it's more than a euro for a hundred 
I lost my money back. And the next abomination off the cab rank of nonsense in this kit is the instruction leaflet, such as it is. I mean, they've gone some effort and cost of printing it in colour. Here they've actually put 899 Naval Air Squadron. It actually says 899 here, which is correct, apart from the fact the decal says 800. But yeah. Anyway, quite a uh, complex and dense history of the Sea Harrier in general. I mean, they call it a Sea Harrier here as well, which is kind of nice. Um, really very little. I mean, from here onwards, it's all about the FR, the FA2 rather than that's the FRS2, the FA2 from there, there onwards. So that bit's just a bit of background. Um, it's pretty awful. Anyway, it's it's maybe nicked off Wikipedia or somewhere like that and, and then just crammed in so you can barely read it. Here's the frame map. We just had a look at these frames. Um, I would point out also on the side of the box, you may remember, I'll show you again. Here it says proudly 63 parts. If you bought two of these kits, you'd have 66 parts because there's 33 parts here, it's not 63, 33. Again, you can see how the nose is rounded. The FRS one had a pointed nose because of the radar and it had a uh, pito here and a lot of them had in-flight refueling probes as well, which they do recognize in the instructions because, you know, here's, that looks nothing like the ejection seat. I'm not entirely sure if that part is even on the frame. They call that five. Four, four is supposed to look like that. Four looks like that. It's not even a hint of anything to do with a cockpit shape at all. You know, you would think I've got the wrong bits of plastic inside the box, but their own instruction sheet shows you what they give you. And then they give you instructions for what appears to be a totally different kit. This has got the Sea Harrier nose, for example. This has got oh, <laughs> aerials, proper gun shaped gun pods, models, inlet ramps. All these bits and pieces are, are, are all missing on this kit. Um, I would point out that if you've got two pegs to fix something into a tail, it is then impossible to set it at plus or minus 19 degrees. But there we go. On this one, you'll see the uh, pito and a refueling probe, neither of which are here. This rocket pod, that it doesn't even have engraving that looks anything like that. And then the decal sheets, the guide to marking and painting. Again, now it says 899 Naval Air Squadron, even though the decal still says 800 Naval Air Squadron. It's 09, at least they got the name of that one right, with the the winged trident here and the checkerboard tail. An aircraft of the Hermes Air Group during the South Atlantic campaign. Actually could have been 800 squadron, I don't, I don't know, depends on the actual number. And the aircraft from the Indian Navy on Vukrant. Um, colours here in multiple languages what they are. Uh, there's a federal standard and a RAL number. You just sort of make up the colours, really. Dark sea grey or extra dark sea grey? See, extra, extra dark sea grey here is a lighter colour than dark sea grey. That's brilliant. I mean, this... I am really, really, really unimpressed by this heap of junk. Let's have a look at the decal sheet. And then the decal sheet. Okay, where to start? Well, 
there are a lot of stencils. I mean, a lot of stencil data. Considering how rough the plane is, there's a lot of stencil data, which is fine. I mean, look at the size weapon pile on stuff. We'll have a closer look in a moment. They're not actually not that bad. The uh, warning triangles are terrible, but some of it isn't too bad. Um, this side of the aircraft is celebrating 50 years of 899 Squadron, quite correctly. This side is celebrating 800 Naval Air Squadron, somewhat incorrectly. It says 899 NAS here. There are decals for the instrument panel and the side panels in the cockpit, despite there not being an instrument panel or any side panels. There's a stencil to the ejection seat, even though the seat is barely more than a bench. It's quite bizarre how much detail they've gone into here that's completely unnecessary. The best thing, so well, for example, you know, here you've got decals for the undercarriage. That you, you're not going to see them. and It's it's 172nd. You're not going to see any of that. Bravo for providing it, but no. Thank you I don't even know what these are decals for because it doesn't say. Here we have 26 compressor blade numbers, which is brilliant. Weren't it not for the fact that there's no compressor blade on this kit? You think if they spent a half of the budget of this on the actual kit they might just have got something that's worth getting hold of they didn't even spend that budget on this obviously this they certainly haven't purchased the the, the services of a proofreader anyway let's have a closer look at some of these and see what we've got i don't know if it shows up very well it, it shows up when you're looking at it I don't know if it shows up on here at all. Anyway, you'll notice that you've got the red on the inside of the the uh, roundel and the blue on the outside. And there's like kind of like a you can see the the sort of relief of it. There's like a other bit, and and that looks sort of slightly purpley. Now, if I'm going to be generous, I'm going to say that that was really good decal making because. When they overpainted the red, white, and blue on the aircraft um, in the Falklands, of course, the bit over the white didn't quite go as dark blue as the rest of it. However, the proportions aren't right, so that's just shoddy. Um, and of course, by the 50th anniversary, they would have got rid of all of that and repainted it several times. Again, there you go 899, 50 years. 800, 50 years. The some of this is actually not badly printed. It's oh yeah, it is actually badly printed. Pretty sure rescue should be yellow, not um, orange. You know they're kind of representative. It's oops, I'm in shock. These um, warning triangles are just terrible. Really not printed well at all. Weapons pylons again. But what are all those if that's not weapons pylons? Oh, I wonder. You've got a canopy decal, just suppose it's cool. Um, yeah, some of them are actually really, the black stuff is actually not badly printed, but just seems completely irrelevant when you've got such appallingly bad plastic to put it on. There's the compressor blades. And there's the, you know, it's not a bad cockpit layout. If only they bothered giving you an instrument panel. There it is then. Um, I'm kind of short of words of how much I dislike this kit on, on so many levels. I mean, just uh, the kit itself, the plastic and the design and the, oh, the rest of it is bad enough. And you know what? It, it sells for £10 in the UK. And you sometimes you can about 10 quid for this. 
you, you get what you pay for. Frankly, I think it should be like three or four pounds. But hey, that's just me. What annoys me really more than anything is the constant switching in in the boxing, the branding, the printed materials, even the decal sheet between numbers 800 Naval Air Squadron and 899 Naval Air Squadron. 800 Squadron, of course, was the squadron in which my father served. 899, a squadron formed in the Second World War with a remarkable history behind it. Both squadrons have traditions, and I think that this distinct lack of interest, this sort of flippant disinterest and lack of proofreading at least slightly dishonours both squadrons. It should be one or the other, and it should actually be 899 with those colours. Uh, end of story. 800 squadrons shouldn't even be mentioned. But then even on the history, and it goes yakkers on about the FA2 Sea Harriers, which it isn't, doesn't even mention the squadron that is actually being celebrated allegedly in the kit. It's it's very poor. How uh, It's very, very poor. Anyway, as I say, I'm going to be, I don't shy away from a challenge. I will try and build the thing. I'll do my best with it um, and see how we go. I think it'll end up essentially a Harrier GR Mark one and a half in fleet air arm colours, but we'll do what we can with it. Um, if you want to have a look at one of these for yourself, because you don't believe me that anything could be quite as awful as this, then um, they're available in Hobbycraft. As I say, I think they're £10. Anyway, if you've liked, at least liked the video, then please do give it the old Imperial thumbs up on the like button below, because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they are published, and it won't cost you a penny. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Hope to see you again on the channel very soon. Take good care now and goodbye.